Alex, I want to come to you first, mate, because it's another disastrous day for Chelsea. You lose again. You sit 12th in the league table. Give me your thoughts, mate. Uh, look, I want Pochettino out sacked like Ancelotti was sacked in the, in the tunnels of Everton. Like, sack him there, kick him there, beat him up in there. Don't let him on a coach. That's how bad I want that manager out. That's number one. Number two, if I catch the defensive coach in the streets, I will personally find like slap the crap out of him. Because conceding goals every time on the set pieces at Chelsea, the first ball goes in, we clear it. The, uh, the next ball is nowhere near to be found. And that's how we consider it. The rebound. Mm. Constantly, constantly. Call will has to be opened. Like when that shot came in today, why was he protecting his balls instead of actually uh, press the ball? The guy literally ran to the ball, protecting his balls. Not ran. He stood still. He should close the gap instead of he was just protecting his balls. My biggest fear was lose against United was because I think it was so bad lost against United that could affect the actual young team that we already had for the next four or five games. And I was right. I actually predicted that we're actually going to lose. I said, we're going to lose the next couple of games and people will realize that we, the reason why we're losing, it's not individuals, it's the setup. <laughs> people saying that we are going somewhere at what one point is because we had some kind of patterns happening early in the season. But guess what? The same manager decided to change those patterns and constantly change the way we play. It was never the same uh, 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 back four. It was never the same setup. Game after game, game after game. One thing I was going to criticize the actual, um, what's the name, the ownership. When you spend the money, you do not spend the money on your academy and your number one team at one time. You build your number one team first, so academy players be interested by joining them. That's why you don't have to overpay them to come to Chelsea. That's all it is. We didn't spend the billion on the number one squad. We spent the billion for on academy and starting 11. And we didn't get no, nowhere near. You see what I'm saying? There's no actual good signing, if you think about it, the, uh, the way the money is actually uh, showing us. None. I want Mourinho. I don't care. You want, want Mourinho, Mourinho back? Yeah. yeah. Think, uh, I know it's not going to happen for one specific reason. Because board will not hire a manager that actually going to challenge them. That's the reason they're not going to get him. But I want Mourinho because I want them to challenge the actual board. You know what I'm saying? I want that kind of manager that actually going to challenge the board. That's all it is. I, and, uh, look, Alec, um, uh, 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 Andrew's here with us, uh, Winter Surfer. Do, do, you, do you agree with that? Will that fix your team bringing back Jose Mourinho? I don't want Jose Mourinho here because I don't want him tainted in our fan base's eyes and everything like that. I just don't. I just want someone who can coach. This word, this word in the fan base needs to be removed. Elite or big name. Eddie Howe, uh, Unai Emery. They're not seen as elite, but they're coaches. Okay? They're coaches. This is a problem. Today was another pathetic display. And his ineptitude and his coaching staff are written all over it. He doesn't know what... I don't know what he's doing. He has, he has like eight or nine days sometimes in between games. This is the first time in weeks that we've had two games back-to-back -back in a short amount of time. We're not seeing anything. There's no pattern. There's no style of play. I don't know what they're trying to do. I mean, I don't know why... His substitutions are mad to me. He brings on Ian Matson for seven minutes. For what? For what? What's he going to do? He kept with Mudrick. Mudrick. Mudrick's a sprinter who gets a footballer's wage. That's all he is. Did you, if you put, server, did you hear what um, Harry Redknapp said about him? Have you seen that no, clip? I, I'm, I'm, so I'm essentially, saying. Harry Redknapp was talking, I think, on Talk Sport, and they asked him about Mahalo Mudrick, and he said when they Chelsea signed him, and obviously Lampard went back, Lampard spoke to Harry, obviously their family, and said, yeah. we've got this kid, 90 million, who's got great raw talent, but he cost 90 million pounds, and... I know Lampard's not the greatest of managers, 
That isn't because he doesn't understand football. Exactly. He isn't able. He isn't able to. Yeah, but let me finish. But he he's a bad manager because he isn't able to communicate things right. particularly well and and teach you. But my belief is he understands football. The feedback was. This young kid's raw, but he doesn't know the game. And what Harry Redknapp says is, how are you spending £90 million on a player that doesn't yep. know the game of football yet? That's You do that, yes, it's raw talent, but if he's that raw that he doesn't really understand how to play football at the elite level yet, you can't it, be dropping £90 million on him. It's crazy. No, and that's where, that's where I will get on the owners in the terms of, like, all the other owners are not football people, but they've hired the best football people, near enough, in those positions. Like City's owners aren't football people, but they got the Barcelona people in, right? No matter what you think of them. Like mm. FSG got Michael Edwards in. You want to people bag on Edwards and stuff like that, but at least they're like football people and they're doing things. No one's meant, no Arsenal fans aren't mentioning Cronky for like two years, right? Or anything like that. So it's about getting the best of the best in, all right? We've got guys who, listen, wherever you think, they, they're just not they're just not doing their job in terms of like they were boasting at the start of the summer or the start of the season you'll see what we like Stuart's been boasted about oh you'll see what our plan was it will come you'll see it right now but then it all filters down right because the manager is still there still got to put his ideas across he has not got the excuse of playing extra games I've got, I've got a question there was nothing Gary. hang on Alex there's nothing there it's like he just the lineup today he just throws bro you're in for what what did he throw My... bro you're in for? He hardly gave him any minutes. This is what I don't get. And he changed the centre back partnership again. He mm. changed the centre back partnership again. He does this every game. My it's question just, it's... it's 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 a little bit biased because I actually do think like i first of all, I'm not gonna take any manager's advice from Lampard. He can go, he's a legend of the game, but that just shows that Lampard is like sometimes the players do not make a good managers. And I don't care about what Lampard about said about Mujic. That's not my point. My point is, I actually think that the, when you bring those kind of players, you don't bring them with a starting 11. You bring them to learn from somebody. Mudrik's supposed to be learning from somebody. Who is he learning from? Sturridge? Oh, no, not Sturridge. What's his name? Uh, what's Sterling. 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 Well, He's supposed to learn it, from Sterling. This is just, mate, you're absolutely right. This is your problem. Is even your older players are not leaders, and if it's if yeah, it's you. true that Thiago Silva said doesn't want the captaincy because his English isn't good enough, that isn't a good enough reason for me. Football yeah. is a is pretty much an international language in itself. You, I think you know you might you've been at the club a few years now. If if that's the only thing that's stopping you, why haven't you learned a little bit more English? All you've got to learn is ref, uh, <laughs> ref, and, and talk to him. Like they'll be able to communicate. You don't have leaders in your team, and you need to invest in that. And that's what's not helping these youngsters. There's a lot of talent and there's a lot of ability there, but they look like a bunch of boys lost. They look absolutely. If you if you went and got loads of apprentices who've just passed their qualifications and employed them all to build you your house, even though they've all got the qualifications, your house would have problems. You still need experienced builders, construction workers on site leading them. When you first pass your driving test, legally you can drive. But are you as comfortable with somebody who's been driving 10 years and has got experience? No, that, my bit of theory is you don't learn to drive until you pass your driving test. Then you really learn what the road is about. That first day you drive by yourself, it's a different experience to having somebody else next to you that's got control of the pedals. And these youngsters at Chelsea need help. And that's on the board. Equally, though, I look at what your manager's doing, and I agree with Winter Surfer. Changing your subs, um, your centre backs all the time isn't allowing certain players to get a good run of games where they can get up ahead of steam. You know, the fact that, again, Reese James, I understand they want to... There comes a point with Reese James where you've got to say, this guy's body is going to keep letting you down. He should not be a first-team starter anymore. Forget his ability. He keeps breaking down. Chelsea fans have got to wake up and smell the coffee, and so yep. has his manager. Yes, he might be a poster boy of the club. He's from the academy, but he keeps getting injured. And how many players have been as injury-prone as him in, in, in our lifetimes watching football who have suddenly not become injury prone anymore. The only guy I can think of, he had two full seasons, one at Arsenal and then at Man United, where he didn't pick up injuries. But before and after that, Van Persie was injury prone. Like Reese James, in my opinion, and it's his hamstrings. These things are going to keep going and going and going. Well, and all I've these said problems it. are on the manager. I've said it. If you, once Gusto is fit, Gusto should be the right back. That's it. When Gusto is fit, he should be the first choice right back. Reese James, Gusto they check this out. If they check this out and he needs surgery and he refuses to, then that's that's on him. He's finished. 
Okay, he's finished because now it's a problem with the hamstring. It would need like a Kante style uh, operation on like Kante. And if he's out for months, he's out for months. But he needs to do everything to try and get it right. He needs to change his body type as well. I think if he mm. can, or or the conversation needs to be you can't play right back. Mm. So you need to find another position. Absolutely. Maradon position. here. Maradon here says, Terry, you said Mudrik was a good player. Listen, I watched Mudrik. I watched about 10 of his games before well, we thought Arsenal were getting him, weren't we? And there was talent in there. I saw what he did in the Champions League and I think raw talent. I saw a really good young player. But for me, there's two things that have gone wrong here. One, he's gone to a team with zero experience, with no solid structure, and that's damaged him. Secondly, I think he personally has made a mistake by at the last minute going to going to Chelsea. We've seen this happen before. Alexis Sanchez, all set to go City, and then because of a big offer, has had his head turned last minute and gone to Man United. I bet if you actually asked Mahalo Mudrik honestly, if he was allowed to answer honestly, he'd say, I don't think I should have done this. I should have just gone no, no move now and maybe waited into the summer and gone to Arsenal or got the deal done there. I think those two things have happened. It's There's a great line in a, in a song by the, the, the brilliant Barry Manilow, which is the right love at the wrong time. And I think Mudrik is, is, a, is a superb talent, but I think he's gone to the wrong club at the wrong time. And you put all those things together and it's been an absolute disaster.